I have never seen such a vicious bully before. They stopped a pregnant woman on the street and asked, is this a hybrid baby in your belly? The pregnant woman didn't want to engage with them and was preparing to leave. But Sharp not only blocked her path, he also reached out and touched the woman's belly. The woman immediately slapped him across the face. But unexpectedly, Sharp retaliated with a punch to her head. The woman fell to the ground instantly. Sharp and his accomplice, Curtis, looked at the pregnant woman who had already lost consciousness. At this moment, another accomplice of Sharp wasn't satisfied yet. He kicked away the pregnant woman's bag and ruthlessly kicked her in the belly. Then came the second kick, followed by the third kick. Only then were they satisfied. They arrogantly left in their car, never imagining that this act of bullying would ruin their lives. Upon seeing this, the witness quickly called the police. The pregnant woman was rushed to the hospital and was in need of immediate rescue. At the same time, the woman's husband heard the news and ran all the way to the hospital. Seeing his wife in this state, looked at his injured wife with a heartache. He, named Emmett, a police officer. His wife managed to tell him with great effort that she was attacked by a bald man accompanied by two lackeys. Just as she finished speaking, the doctor urgently pushed her into the operating room. Emmett clenched his fist and punched the wall. He was well aware of the local underworld and knew that it was the work of Sharp. Emmett immediately prepared to seek revenge against Sharp. But his colleagues stopped him in time. They told him that his wife still needed him by her side and they would take care of Sharp. They assured him that they would bring Sharp in and bring him and his wife justice. Afraid that something might go wrong during his wife's surgery, Emmett reluctantly agreed. The town was small, and his colleagues were efficient. Within three hours, they had captured Sharp and his two accomplices. Once in custody at the police station, Sharp and his two companions were still smiling and showed no remorse. The sheriff was furious and said, All right, I will investigate your mafia boss. This made Sharp anxious, and he cursed at the sheriff. The sheriff, armed with a search warrant, arrived at the mafia boss's house. The mafia boss was very disdainful, thinking that they wouldn't find anything. However, the sheriff discovered a hidden room behind the liquor cabinet. Upon opening it, the police chief found a stash of illegal weapons. There were scythes, various types of shotguns, rows of grenades, and on the opposite wall were 10 M16 rifles. The sheriff immediately ordered the arrest of the mafia boss. On the other side, the doctor informed Emmett that although his wife had temporarily escaped danger, their unborn child had already lost its life. This news was like a bolt from the blue striking Emmett directly. Just three hours ago, he was happily talking and laughing with his wife, imagining a happy life for their family of three. Now, everything had changed. Outside the hospital room, the sheriff came to visit Emmett's wife. He warned Emmett that Sharp and his two companions had been arrested, and he should not act impulsively. He reminded Emmett of his role as a police officer. At that moment, Emmett's wife woke up, and beside her hospital bed, he comforted his injured wife. His wife said, this is just a test from God, but both of them understood that the root cause of this tragedy was those three individuals. Looking at his weakened wife, Emmett silently swore that he would seek justice for their unborn child. Emmett returned to the police station, dismissed the staff on duty, and closed the office curtains. Sharp knew that Emmett was the pregnant woman's husband, but he didn't care, believing that in a police station, would a police officer dare to act recklessly? His accomplice was also laughing nearby. Emmett remained silent and quietly took off his holster, bringing out the weapons he had just retrieved from the mafia boss's house. He set up a table with various weapons, a chain ball, a hammer, knives, and everything else. Finally, Emmett chose an iron rod with a round ball at the head. Sharp looked at Emmett, saying, I'm not afraid of you, beside him. Both of his accomplices even laughed. This buddy wouldn't dare to touch us, did he? completely unafraid of Emmett. Emmett paid no attention to Sharp and walked towards the adjacent cell. The police were going to lynch the prisoners. If they could beat him, the prisoners would be allowed to walk free. Emmett opened the cell door of the two accomplices and Curtis pointed at him, saying, be careful, I'll kill you. Emmett suddenly exerted himself and struck his leg with a hard blow. The other guy, caught off guard, was struck on the head by Emmett, followed by another blow to the body. Emmett then kicked him, recalling how arrogant he had been on the street, kicking Emmett's pregnant wife's belly three times. Now it was time for revenge. Curtis launched a surprise attack on Emmett, knocking his weapon away and taking the opportunity to lock his throat, his strong arm strength making it hard for Emmett to breathe. Curtis shouted, telling his teammate to finish the job quickly. However, he has already been knocked unconscious. At that moment, Sharp, standing nearby, was still cheering them on, saying, finish him off. Just as Emmett was about to suffocate, he remembered his unborn child. 
His eyes turned red in an instant. And he went into a rage. He kept retreating, slamming Curtis onto the iron rod. Once, twice, giving heavy blows to him. Cracking his back, Emmett threw Curtis to the ground. And he couldn't get up anymore. Emmett prepared to finish him off, but Sharp said, he's had enough. Hearing this, Emmett's anger grew even stronger. My unborn child had already died and my wife was still in critical condition. You say that's enough. Emmett faced Curtis again, and delivered another heavy kick, leaving him motionless. Next, it was Sharp's turn. Emmett approached the weapons, tearing open an evidence bag, and putting on the brass knuckles inside. Sharp continued to provoke Emmett, but Emmett stood in front of him, expressionless, staring at him. Sharp pretended to be calm and said, I will never apologize. Emmett said, in the face of death, everyone is equal. The pregnant woman was punched in the face, and kicked in the belly. Her police officer husband wanted revenge. Emmett told Sharp, that if he could defeat him, he could walk free. As Emmett opened the door, Sharp rushed out. He went out to get a weapon, but Emmett hugged him tightly. Emmett striked him with his elbow, forcing Sharp to let go. Immediately after, Emmett threw Sharp out, and he crashed heavily into a table. Sharp picked up a small knife, and made a cut on Emmett's leg. Emmett, not backing down, grabbed Sharp's arm and knocked the knife away, then striked him with elbow again that sent him crashing into an iron cabinet. Taking advantage of a gap, Sharp ran out to get a gun, but Emmett quickly caught up, grabbing him from behind. With a move like Mount Tai pressing on the top, Emmett forced Sharp to the ground, and the gun fell as well. Sharp grabbed Emmett's face with his hands, pressing his hands onto the ground. Sharp couldn't move anymore. At this moment, Emmett raised his right hand with brass knuckles on it putting all his strength into a powerful blow to Sharp's stomach. This punch broke through Sharp's defenses, severely damaging his internal organs. He could no longer resist. With his fist raised like a king, Emmett looked down upon Sharp, swinging his fist. This punch is for my wife. This punch is for my child. This punch is for me. With three punches, revenge was exacted. Sharp lost his teeth and his face became disfigured, left with only a trace of life. Emmett had finally vented all his anger and he turned around and lay on the ground, shedding tears. Colleagues arrived to clean up the scene, and an ambulance was called in time. Curtis was seriously injured, and died on the spot. Sharp suffered multiple fractures and serious internal injuries, while the other guy had a mild concussion, considered relatively light. However, this would become a potential disturbing issue. Facing the sheriff's inquiry, Emmett spoke frankly, saying that if it happened again, he would do the same thing as a man. He must bring his wife and deceased child justice. Those three individuals were all scums. As Emmett spoke, tears flowed down his cheeks. This was the first time the sheriff had seen Emmett cry. The sheriff understood Emmett, and did not impose any punishment on him, assuring him that he would help Emmett resolve everything. Emmett took off his badge himself, and placed it on the sheriff's desk. Emmett understood that from the moment he started attacking, he was no longer a qualified police officer. Two days later, Emmett resigned. Although the sheriff tried hard to persuade him, and promised not to punish him, Emmett couldn't live with his own conscience. He wanted to temporarily go to another city to clear his mind. So he bid farewell to the sheriff. The severely injured Sharp, cried and begged for help in the hospital. But no one paid any attention to him. At this moment, an assassin walked in from outside. It turned out that Sharp, after being beaten by the police, had embarrassed his organization leading to the arrest of their mafia boss. He spent several months in prison. The assassin removed the intravenous drip from him, and he realized that he was facing death, begging for mercy continuously. Sharp was in no condition to resist. The assassin took out a rubber tube, strangling his neck. Sharp struggled non-stop, but with broken bones all over his body, and his hands cuffed, he quickly died, putting an end to his wicked life. One month later, this is a true story. After Emmett and his wife came out of the supermarket, a car suddenly stopped in front of them. As soon as the car door opened, it turned out to be Sharp's accomplice who had a rifle in his hands, pointing it at Emmett. Emmett shielded his wife behind him, and closed his eyes. In the next second, alas, Emmett and his wife were shot multiple times, and fell in a pool of blood. Taking advantage of the chaos, the murderer fled. Upon receiving the news of Emmett's murder, his colleagues were enraged. The sheriff led all the members to capture the murderer, directly ramming his car. He limped away in a sorry state. But the sheriff, holding a shotgun, was determined to gun down this villain. He was surrounded by the police, kneeling on the ground, begging for mercy. The police accused him of killing Emmett, but he still held a tough attitude, saying they had no evidence and couldn't arrest him. Indeed, they were not planning to arrest this man, 
because at this moment, they were not performing the task as police officers. But as Emmett's friends, the men knew he was doomed. With the sheriff leading the way, everyone opened fire simultaneously. He was shot and left with holes full of his body. Good and evil have their own retribution. And finally, revenge was obtained for Emmett's family. The end. The show is called Banshee. Question for this episode. If you were Emmett, would you seek revenge through the law? Or through the fist? Or would you use both methods? Comment 111 for seeking revenge through the law. Comment 222 for seeking revenge through the fist. Comment 333 for using both methods. Faced with dual identities. One as a police officer, and the other as a father. Emmett finds it difficult to decide. It is not wrong for him to seek revenge for his child. But in terms of how to seek revenge, and the method of revenge, definitely requires careful consideration. I recommend watching the TV show to see how it unfolds. Alright, this is the end of this video. Remember to like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.